The Battle of Ryloth was one of the largest and most important battles of the early Clone Wars fought over the Twi'lek homeworld. For several months after the initial offensive, the planet was subjected to a brutal Techno-Union occupation before Republic broke the planet's blockade and, with the help from local resistance fighters, liberated the planet. We've discussed parts of the Battle of Ryloth in the past, but we've usually focused on the ground theatres. In this video, we'll be discussing the battle's naval theatre, particularly what happened before and after the part of the naval battle we were shown in Star Wars The Clone Wars. Attention, Sergeant on deck! Ryloth, despite being pretty remote, became strategically valuable with the outbreak of the Clone Wars. This wasn't due to the planet's location, but rather because it was the headquarters of the 14th Sector Army, the Republic's Red Tails Command. That wasn't why the Confederacy invaded Ryloth, however. The assault on Ryloth was spearheaded by the Techno Union and was the brainchild of its foreman, Watt Tambor, who wanted to capture Ryloth for non-strategic reasons. Fellow Separatist Council member Pasal Argente had a ton of money and rare treasures stored away on Ryloth, and Tambor wanted to use a Separatist assault on the planet as an excuse to steal Argente's stuff. Due to its status as a Republic Sector Army headquarters, Ryloth was protected by a fleet of Veneta-class Star Destroyers commanded by Admiral Dow, but this defense fleet was quickly overwhelmed by the Confederacy's initial attack fleet led by the Nemoidian captain, Ma Tuk. Tuk commanded the Separatist fleet on Tambor's behalf from his flagship, the Luka Hulk class battleship, Procura, which was supported by a number of munificent class star frigates. Captain Tuk's forces were augmented by squadrons of vulture droids and the Confederacy's new hyena bombers, which carried out bombing runs on Admiral Dow's ships before moving to bomb Republic forces on Ryloth's surface, where the Techno-Union droid army was already being deployed. As Tambor's droids battled Republic and Twi'lek forces on the ground, Took moved to finish off the defense fleet. After Admiral Dow reported the desperate situation at Ryloth to the Jedi Council, his flagship's reactor was disabled and his Star Destroyer was destroyed. Admiral Dow was killed and the rest of his fleet was destroyed in short order. Now with naval supremacy, Captain Took established a blockade of Ryloth positioning his flagship and several munificent class star frigates around the planet. They then deployed additional waves of battle droids to the surface. Republic forces on Ryloth's surface were crushed. General Imagundi, Captain Keeley, and what clones remained on the planet were all killed. Republic blockade runners were able to deliver supplies to the Twi'lek resistance, allowing them to survive for several months longer. But for the most part, Ryloth fell under separatist control. Wat Tambor took over the planet and promptly began looting taking everything of value his droids could find, regardless of whether it belonged to Pasal Agente or not. For several months, Tambor and his forces retained control of Ryloth. Eventually, however, the Republic was able to launch a counterattack. The Republic was only able to muster a small initial naval force for the operation due to pressure on other battlefronts. Admiral Yularen, Anakin Skywalker, and Ahsoka Tano were assigned to command the offensive but they were only sent in with three Veneta-class Star Destroyers, the Resolutes, the Defender, and the Redeemer. Fortunately, the Separatist blockade seemed similarly small, consisting solely of the Luka Hulk-class battleship Procura and two Munificent-class Star Frigates. Skywalker and Yularen felt confident enough that they launched a full frontal assault on this small fleet, dispatching V-19 torrents led by Ahsoka to lead the way. But as Republic forces pressed the offensive, four additional Munificent class frigates jumped in, surrounding the Republic fleet. Swarms of vulture droids overwhelmed the Republic starfighters and began suicide runs against Yularen star destroyers, which the blockade ships were already tearing into. The Redeemer was destroyed, and the Defender was severely damaged. The Resolute also suffered extensive damage, including an explosion on one of its bridges that nearly killed Admiral Yularen. Republic forces were forced to retreat in disarray. With his forces cut in half, Skywalker ultimately chose to resort to war crimes to break the blockade. He ordered the Defender evacuated of everyone except himself and R2-D2 before taking the Star Destroyer back to Ryloth and pretending to surrender to Captain Took. He was able to stall for long enough to get the Defender close to the Procurer. 
After his ship's sensors determined that Skywalker was the only life form aboard the Star Destroyer, Took realized what was happening and ordered the Star Destroyer destroyed. But it was too late. Skywalker programmed the ship to ram the Procurer before fleeing in an escape pod. The Defender smashed into the Procurer and destroyed it, and even though Took was also able to make it to an escape pod, CIS naval forces were effectively decapitated. Meanwhile, under Ahsoka Tano's command, the Resolute joined the battle, utilizing the Marg Sable maneuver to shield its bridges and main hangar from enemy fire, luring the remaining fleet of Munificent Class Star Frigates in for an attack. While the droid commanders of the surviving Separatist ships were distracted, Tano led several squadrons of Y-Wing bombers in shelling the heavy cruisers. Since the Procurer was the only ship in the blockade with Starfighter hangars, the Separatist cruisers were largely without Starfighter cover, allowing Tano and her pilots to destroy several of them and severely damage the rest. The blockade was broken, and Republic forces could begin the ground assault. After the breaking of the blockade, the remainder of Republic forces joined the fight. At least two additional Venator class Star Destroyers were brought in to support the Resolute, while three acclimated class assault ships descended to Ryloth's surface to drop off the Republic's clone armies. The assault ships were initially impeded by a battery of ground-based Techno-Union J-1 semi-autonomous proton cannons in the village of Nabat, commanded by a tactical droid TX-20. One of the assault ships was heavily damaged by these cannons, forcing Republic ground forces to hold back while Obi-Wan Kenobi and Ghost Company were sent in to neutralize the cannons. With a little help from the enslaved people of Nabat, Republic forces were successful in destroying the cannons, allowing the ground battle to resume in earnest. Mace Windu and the bulk of the Republic's ground forces landed near Nabat and then pressed on toward the capital, Lesu, which Tambor had made his personal fortress. Meanwhile, the naval battle continued. Admiral Yularen resumed command of the Republic fleet, while Skywalker took his starfighter and joined Tano in leading Republic V-19 Torrent and Y-Wing squadrons against what was left of the Separatist blockade. But additional CIS naval forces joined the battle, including several Providence-class carrier-slash-destroyers and recusant class light frigates, which brought additional vulture droids, rogue-class starfighters, and hyena bombers. The naval battle continued, but Republic forces were able to at least contain the Separatist reinforcements preventing them from landing additional troops on Ryloth's surface. As a quick note, it's unknown what became of Martuk. He might have assumed command of Separatist naval forces after they arrived, or he might have been captured or killed by the Republic after the blockade was broken. Either way, he didn't show up in any later battles, so either he was killed or captured, or his superiors really weren't impressed by his performance. Eventually, the ground battle turned against the Confederacy. Tambor reluctantly prepared to evacuate Rylo. As a last spiteful act, however, he sent out squadrons of hyena bombers to carpet bomb every Twi'lek city they could hit, hoping to slow down or demoralize Republic forces. As the naval battle above was nearly won, Skywalker and Tano descended into Ryloth's atmosphere to take out these bombers. They narrowly managed to destroy the squadron meant for Lesu before it could bomb the city, saving the lives of Mace Windu, Cham Sanjula, Wat Tambor, and a whole lot of Twi'leks. Lesu was retaken by the Republic, and Wat Tambor was taken into Republic custody. Tambor had planned to evacuate before the fall of Lesu, but he waited until all his stolen treasure was evacuated. His tactical droid, TA-175, got tired of all his stalling and ultimately stole Tambor's escape shuttle, reporting to Count Dooku that Tambor was a dumbass and that he had been forced to abandon him. TA-175's shuttle was the last to leave Ryloth, and once it rendezvoused with the fleet in orbit, what remained of Separatist naval forces abandoned Ryloth. Isolated pockets of Techno-Union ground forces fought on, but for all intents and purposes, Ryloth had been liberated by the Republic. So that's our look at the naval theatre of the Battle of Ryloth. Where does this particular naval battle rank for you in the realm of the Clone Wars? Let us know in the comment section below, and as always guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.